Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys' day is going well. That title was inherently a little bit of clickbait because there is no such thing as the perfect diet. It just doesn't exist. There's too much variables within people, lifestyles, body types, everything out there. And I've been trying to make this video really short and I was like, I'm just gonna make a quick video on how to count your macros and it was like 20 minutes because it gets really easy to dig really deep into this kind of diet stuff. So I'm gonna try to make this under 10 minutes for you guys. Counting macros. There's so many diets out there. This one is IIFYM, if it fits your macros. Now let me tell you, this is the reason why this diet works. It's because all the pros use it, bodybuilders use it, high-end athletes use it. I guarantee the diets you see on Instagram and stuff like that, high-level sports athletes, bodybuilders, if that's your guys' goal, they're not doing these stupid random diets where you eat green vegetables on Tuesday, but you don't eat meat on Wednesdays and, and every other Saturday. They're not doing that kind of stuff. I guarantee it. There might be a few outliers that prove the rule, but for the most part, people are doing a, a scaled version of counting macros because it's simple, it's consistent, it's very easy to adjust, and it works every time. I guarantee it. So, how to count your macros. This sheet right here is the three phases of what your goals are. You're either in a baseline, a surplus or deficit. And the only thing that changes that is how much of any property between proteins, carbs, fats, and calories you add in or you wish to add into your diet. Now the middle column is your baseline, which means if I just sat right here like this, that caloric amount per day would make it so I wouldn't gain weight, I wouldn't lose weight, I would stay the same, thus a baseline. Every other thing on the other sides of wherever I put this right here, is you're either trying to gain weight or you're losing weight. You're either in a surplus or a deficit. And the easiest way to calculate that is to figure out what you're eating right now. So track it down. How much protein you're eating a day? How many calories you're eating a day? Now, if you're trying to lose weight, take 20% of whatever you're eating and slide those numbers to the left. If you're trying to gain weight and you're a hard gainer out there and you're not gaining any weight off 1800, add 20% to it, slide those numbers to the right. As you can tell, the difference between a 20% deficit and a 20% surplus is the difference between 1,300 calories and 2,200 calories. So you really gotta figure out where you're at. Now, why this works really well is because every restaurant, every dining establishment is usually going to show you what the macro count is for that meal. They're not gonna tell you if it's vegan, potentially, maybe specialty restaurants will, but they're not gonna tell you what is the ketogenic factor of this, if this is gonna break your ketosis, if this qualifies as a vegan but not a vegetarian sort of meal. They're more than likely gonna tell you what the calories are, the protein, the fat, and the overall, basically, what is macro. So they're telling you, hey, these are the menu options we have for this restaurant. This is the macro level. And the reason why counting your macros, tracking these numbers over here work, because you can do what's called IIFYM, if it fits your macros. Calories in versus calories out is gonna help you transform your body. If you're above in one and low in the other, you're either gonna lose weight or you're gonna gain weight. And the best part is, Besides eating really, really clean, your body's not gonna know the difference between 20 grams of protein from fish and 20 grams of protein from steak. In the same way where 20 grams of carbs from a potato versus 20 grams of carbs from something else, they're all pretty much the exact same for general level fitness. I'm gonna precipice that. If you're a high-end, high-level bodybuilder or athlete, having the cleanest version of those carbs, fats, and proteins is gonna be the pinnacle reason why maybe you take first on stage. But if you're just a general level of someone who's looking for fitness, trying to get to a healthier place, calories in versus calories out, and flexible dieting, which is just counting your macros but someone labeled it something different so they could sell you a book on how to do it, is gonna be the reason that gets you those good results. So again, calories in versus calories out. If you know that per day, let's say we're just gonna take surplus for an example here. Let's say per day you know you have to eat 180 grams of protein, 216 grams of carbs, around 75 grams of fat, and roughly 2200 calories. You're gonna break that into whatever eating pattern you do. If it's three times a day, if it's one time a day, just one crazy huge meal, or if it's six meals spread out, which is usually what I suggest, but I give people the option to kind of figure out what works for them. Let's say that you spread it out X amount of times and you know per meal you have to have 20 grams of protein, 60 grams of carbs, and roughly 20 grams of fat. The best part is that is your macros per meal. That is your macros. So when you go to a restaurant, you flip open that book in front of you and you're going through and you're like, hey, baby back ribs, and it's got 100, 100, 
2,000 calories, you automatically know there's no way in hell unless you eat one time a day that that's gonna fit your macros. But you can also flip around the book and be like, hey, this is chicken, like let's say blackened chicken salad. It's got 20, 50, and 15. That's in line or at least roughly close, give or take a reasonable amount into your macros. That means that that meal could either be let's say black and chicken salad, or it could be a highly uh, measured out portion of a meal prep. The two, the numbers line up, A equals B, they're good enough for a general level purpose to say, hey, that fits my macros, it might not be the exact meal prep that my coach or someone says, but hey, it's good enough. That allows you to go out to a restaurant, have fun with friends and family, and not be the stick in the mud who goes like, well, I can only eat half of this because I can only eat green things on Tuesday, red things on Thursday, uh, and all of this doesn't have any enough of the vegan aspects I want. So it's okay if that's your group of friends who all does your diet and is okay with that. But I mean, I've done it myself too, where you go out to a restaurant and you're like, dude, this is none of this is gonna go with my diet. So now you either gotta take one on the chin and eat three times the amount of calories which you would, which sucks. And if you're on a really hard path goal towards getting to where you wanna be, that's a setback which kind of sucks and then you have to go hey i'm not eating here and you bring your own stuff and then you and then you outlaw yourself big time but counting your macros can make the best of a bad situation or just give you a flexible enough diet to where you could pick from a different variable amount of stuff and not be really isolated in a particular diet and that's going to be the reason why you succeed because having that flexibility to make good decisions out of bad opportunities is going to be what's gonna keep you on your diet, it's gonna keep you in that positive mindset where you're constantly crushing those goals because you can obtain them. Having something super small and cliche or a very niche possibility of getting it, you know, aim small, miss small, as people always say. So if you give yourself a bigger net, you have a chance of getting better success out of it. Um, so this is how it is, and I'll have left the screen up there so you guys can see. The only thing you do, find out where you're at right now and if you're either in line with your goal or outline with your goal, you go into one of these two options. You figure out where your baseline is, which is very easy. Just track what you eat. Take three or four days, figure out what you eat. Usually it will highlight potentially how bad or how good you are doing, and then figure out to which category you want. If you're trying to lose weight, you're going into a surplus, you're taking a 20% reduction of where you're at. If you're a hard gainer out there, you go into a 20% surplus. It's that simple. You make a big adjustment initially, and then you compound it and go smaller and smaller and smaller until you concentrate your goal. And then once you've done this a few times, you're gonna it's gonna be a cinch. It's one of those diets to where you know your numbers, you know your macros, and it's very easy to go to a restaurant and be like, no, 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 yep, hey, I'll take that. It's super, super simple, it's clean, it's linear, it's easy to track, and the best part is, it's empirical. You don't have to guess, you don't have to do this. It takes maybe a little bit of arithmetic in the very beginning, and then it's set it and forget it, and it's super, super easy. Again, this is counting your macros. You can go online and figure out a bunch of different ways to do it, and again, no one's gonna be in agreement with the optimum way to count your macros, but it's something that's gonna be very easy to initially start out with and kind of see those goals develop counting your macros, I-I-F-Y-M, if it fits your macros. What I seem to think is the best diet for not only beginning level intermediate people, but also high level athletes as well. The big time bodybuilders and the high performance athletes, I guarantee they do a rough variation of this. It might not be the exact same, they might call it something slightly different, but it's basically around tracking your calories, protein, carbs, and fats, and keeping them in line with your goal using some percentage or some calculation. Hopefully this helps you guys kind of think about a different nutrition path you could be taking, or if you're looking for one, maybe give you the best general level real nutrition for real fitness sort of approach to it or a program or whatever you want to call it. Hopefully this gives you the best path to get where you guys are trying to go. As always, if you have questions in the comment section below, what is this, what is that, anything you guys want to know, comments, questions, concern, leave it down there. I'd be happy to answer. We get back to you guys as fast as possible. It doesn't just sit there for days. It pops up on my phone. I go, hey, cool, I got a comment and I answer it. It's that Simple. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Smash that like button if you did. Get people involved with the Fitness 253. Let them know that there's a community out there who's focused on getting them results so we can grow this community and bring that much more people into the fold and turn some heads for real fitness. Thanks for watching everybody. Most importantly though, take it easy.